Hello, everybody. Welcome to the engineering functional update. Uh, I just wanted to start by highlighting what we've gone over uh, this year so far. Uh, we started the year with a lot of new people. So over the last couple months, we've added 10 uh, new team members to our engineering team um, in a variety of roles, everywhere from the production team to back end, front end. So uh, welcome, uh, especially all the new members. Uh, and everybody's sort of gotten up to speed really quickly. It's been really exciting to see. Uh, yes, Jarka did also start. So sorry to have that. So we actually have 11 people. Uh, so let's celebrate all that has been shipped in the last couple releases from 8.16 all the way to 9.0. And this list is the, just a sample of the features that we accomplished, everything from subgroups to squash and merge and chat ops and all sorts of features. I can't even go into all of them, but I think it's been an incredible effort, a whole team effort, everything from UX, UI to, to the build team to back and front and all coordinating to get all this through. So I, I think it's a reflection of um, our ability to, to collaborate, and, I, and it's just been awesome to see. And I, I think 9.0 was sort of a culminating moment for us as a company because we were able to ship so much and so many great features that enterprises and other users really need and appreciate. So I want to say hats off to everybody for all the things. This is not even a complete list, just a sampling. Uh, we now have a lot of performance data. Uh, I know one of the biggest complaints about GitLab is that it's been slow and we all hear that, we know it, we experience it every day. Uh, we have performance data, um, both macro and micro benchmarks now to allow us to drill in to figure out exactly what's going on and how to fix it. And you know, this is just one graph from the issue, uh, the issue tracker, uh, the issue dashboard actually that uh, I think Felipe and Jarka uh, worked on to optimize it and you can see that we started out being all over the map and now we're really fast under a second or so on general. So I think that's been a huge uh, improvement and everybody on the team has learned how to look at this data and really uh, do something about it. So um, overall what we've seen is a significant reduction in the database load on gitlab.com and that's going to help our customers as well because anyone's using that scale is going to uh, be able to take advantage of the benefits we've put into the product. So one of the big things I want to highlight that you don't necessarily hear about in the blog post, uh, but really impact us today are things like the uh, CI runner long polling. So as many of you know that we run many runners on gitlab.com, either from our shared runners or the community. And what these do, they, they pull our system quite frequently, every couple seconds for new work. So every time we ask for new, they ask for new work, we go figure out there's something, some build for them to run, and then they go do it. And that's a really expensive operation for hitting the database all the time. And so one of the things we've changed is that now it doesn't hit the database as much. We actually sort of uh, barrier in the database. Somebody's not muted, Reb. Oh, sorry. Uh, and now we are able to leverage uh, Redis and, and make this a lot more efficient. So hats off, this is a, uh, a long effort that we finally got in 9.0. Um, the second thing is that Yorick's been really working on really hard is supporting uh, read slaves for the database. So before we only had a single database that was handling all our load and now we actually have two slaves that are actually distributing uh, reads from the database. So that's taken off uh, some hot spots in our database and, and I think it's, it's going to lead to uh, long-term improvements. Production team has really helped optimize the fleet. I know a lot of you have talked about Git push and pulls being slow and then uh, now they're much faster because one of the big reasons is we've, they've moved around a bunch of things. They've converted from the old Azure classic environment to the, the resource manager environment, which is the newer, newer and, and, and faster uh, way of uh, allocating machines. And that has, I think, led to a significant improvement in people's uh, experience. Uh, the developers uh, on back end, front end have done a lot to just optimize some of the things. So a lot of queries were really inefficient. We're starting to tackle them. Um, um, there's more in 9.0 and uh, excited to see what happens there. Um, the GitLab team finally got off to a great start with the CRO shipping their first version in 9.0. Really the goal here is uh, to make the Git access fast. Uh, right now it's really slow because we're running on a network file system and uh, if you look at the low level calls that Git makes, it's really expensive to do a lot of the stuff over Git, uh, at, a, at scale over a network file system. And so if we bring uh, a lot of these operations closer directly on the local file system and just 
for example, feed a diff back to the client, then uh, we can we should see a significant improvement. So I'm really excited to see all the improvements going on there. They're really hitting their stride now and 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 offloading some of the, the file system calls into Gitaloo. Um, overall, there's been a lot of different things that teams have achieved, and this is just again sampling of the things that I, I'm really excited about. Uh, support is feeling good because they finally have a well-defined process to escalate to uh, development. So before it was a lot of times bug reports would come in and they weren't sure who to go to, who to talk to. Uh, now they can add labels, talk to the product manager and so forth. And they've got a great issue board that they review every month, uh, which, which bugs are affecting people the most and which ones they would like to see addressed. And I think that's really been helpful in providing feedback. Uh, the UX team has got some great recordings. There's a link there about navigation. Their plan, they've, they've, they've actually recorded a lot of people uh, using GitLab and, um, and, and seeing what kind of struggles that they've encountered. And we've got a great plan on how to actually address each of the, the points that they're seeing there. Uh, production team, I, I, after the outage in January, we um, took a step back and focused a lot on just getting the house in order and getting the streaming database uh, backups working. So hats off to Pablo and his team, and and uh, and you'll see a lot of talk about Wall-E, which is the backup for the streaming backup replicator, and that's going uh, to a different cloud provider. Uh, our test suite, Edge team's done a great job of actually measuring like what is slow in our tests, and and a lot of our developers basically run into this every day. They they submit a merge request, they wait for a test to pass, and sometimes it's an hour, an hour plus to just get that feedback. And now we're actually measuring it so that we can do something to improve and reduce the time so that improves our productivity. Um, one thing that uh, Remy and his team pushed out recently is just we noticed that the, the parallelization of the test was not that effective. And uh, Camille helped there to uh, push some data back so we have this feedback loop so that when we know we have a better way of balancing we know how long each of the specs run, we can actually uh, better allocate how we group different tests together. So I think that will be really helpful going forward. Uh, we've got a great community. Uh, they're submitting merge requests all the time and we've got a lot more coaches now to look at these community merge requests, guide them, um, coach them into completion. So you know, if you look at 817, we had about 60 or so merge requests come from the community. Now I know we doubled that. And so I think this is, a great uh, force multiplier because suddenly we've, we're getting not just our team, internal team, but also we have got a lot of people externally helping as well. Uh, we've made a lot of process improvements. Uh, now the mantra is if you want something, talk to product and then they'll work with the leads to figure out what is the relative priority uh, of the features, the bugs and so forth. So I think there's, there was some confusion before. Some people were pinging the leads, some people were pinging me, really comes down to the product. I'll be bring, talking to the product too to, see, uh, to identify the things that I, I think need to be addressed too. But I think in general, that's a great single point of contact. Uh, it's more work for product, but I think they can handle it. Uh, we've introduced um, a trainee and trained release managers now before we sort of threw people in the deep, deep end for uh, handling all these release management tasks that happened, had to happen to deliver uh, a package on the 22nd. And I think this has gone really well now that we have uh, people solely responsible. We also have people in the in the wings uh, learning from the current release managers that, that they can take on. So I think this has really helped spread the knowledge of how do we actually get something out the door every month. Uh, the one big change we made in our process this past two months is that we actually are now doing a feature freeze on the seven. And this is something that DZ uh, proposed, and I think it's gone incredibly well because now code gets merged on the 7th and we focus on stabilizing and fixing all the problems that come out so that we're not shipping stuff out in the 20th and having no time to iterate and improve and, and solve the problem. So customers get a better, more stable uh, uh, product and that's really the end goal. Um, one big thing we've changed this year is that, that we've gotten rid of the whole idea of a performance specialist. We've uh, made it clear that performance is everybody's problem. So all those queries and all the, the slowness that we see uh, really have to be pushed down to the, the owners of the feature. So for example, if you're working on um, improving like real time this, we really all have, to, all have to be cognizant of what does that mean and how do we actually address the scale build and performance issues there. 
Um, concerns going forward, uh, you know, I know we're, we're getting more and more questions from customers and we've just got to make sure uh, our support team is equipped to handle all that. There's a lot of new stuff that comes down the pipeline and a lot to learn. So if you've ever been on the support call, it's a lot. It's a, it's, it's a tough task because you could be asked about anything and all the new features we ship out, you know, a lot of times we don't have time to, to learn about it until customers are running into issues. So it's a, it's a challenge to keep up with the pace of our development and also a challenge to answer questions that uh, we may never have seen before. Uh, our, our times to, to test, build, and deploy our entire package really need to be shorter. Uh, I think that's one thing we saw um, early in January. We had tr struggles in getting stuff out the door in, in the December. Uh, so if we had our test suite down to, let's say, 10 minutes, that could be a huge game changer. If we could build a package in a few minutes, that would be huge. And then be able to deploy it really quickly would help us accelerate our, our, our productivity and our, our ability to iterate and improve things. We have a lot of work to do on the user experience front. And this is not just the UX team, but this is kind of uh, in general for everybody to be aware. You know, this is a great blog post by um, GitLab fan about try to go and import repos into GitLab and this is what he had to configure this is the, the error messages this is you know his whole experience and things like that we all have to be really cognizant of because it's it's something we all touch every day and something we all have to to think about how we, we can improve uh, and my last concern is just our cost of get, running GitLab.com are growing you know we're paying more for storage bandwidth runners and all that and we're trying to manage it by at least cutting some things we don't need, but um, long term we're going to need to address this by monetizing GitLab and adding features to help um, charge for build minutes, for example, charge for storage and and so forth. But we're we're still talking about that. We don't have um, we still have, you know we're, we're iterating on that plans. But if you have any ideas, there is an issue out there. Hiring still hiring for a number of roles. Um, you can go to the jobs page and see a lot of these things. Um, if you have any questions about any specific role, feel free to ask. Uh, so if we're going forward for Q2, uh, again, we're gonna still continue to focus on shipping more enterprise related features. Uh, 9.1, uh, we're slated to push out this, uh, what we used to call service desk, it's customer voice. It essentially allows uh, customers to email and uh, email an issue and that issue will be translated into actual GitLab issues. Um, we're working hard on disaster recovery related to GEO. Uh, a number of big customers have been asking for that, and it's, I think, a huge differentiator. Um, another, you know, related to CICD, just being able to schedule things so that you can say, I want a nightly build, for example, and a lot of enterprise customers depend on Jenkins for that today. Um, HA, uh, high availability, um, just being able to run GitLab uh, and, take, and, and, and tolerate one machine going down, that's a huge differentiator too because we talked to a lot of customers and they struggle with this because they need to they need to upgrade their their instance their GitLab or GitHub instance they have to take downtime and that's something admins are really sensitive about. Um, we're really going to focus uh, this quarter on just making GitLab.com fast and reliable because that will help everybody else. That's been one complaint we've heard from a lot of customers that GitLab is a bit slow and we we, we get that. I think Gitly is going to really game make uh, is going to be a big game changer towards that. Um, again, but that's not the only thing. Obviously, there's a lot of work on our end to just improve our um, database queries, the SQL queries that we're making, uh, how we do things, uh, remove things that aren't really absolutely necessary, and so forth. So that's really a high-level summary. I can't touch on everything that's going on. There's too much going on, but uh, any questions? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Paul, we have three databases. Yep. Um, customer voice is EE only. I think, yeah, it's EE premium. Our customers complaining about the speed of EES and EEP. I think they're not maybe complaining about the features per se, but just generally the whole experience, like a lot, just their day to day experience. And we've heard from another customer, a number of our key customers that that is one of the big. Um, things that they struggle with at GitLab. Uh, is ARM helping us reduce our costs? Uh, Pablo, if you're on the call, maybe you can speak to that. I believe so, but maybe you can give a... Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm on the call. Um, not ARM itself. So the moving to ARM, we use it as an excuse to reshape the whole fleet. Uh, before we were with only 20 hosts that were quite large. Now we have a lot more hosts, but are quite smaller. So it is helping reducing the cost, but not 
for the moving to arm itself, but uh, for the change on the shape of the fleet. Okay, uh, I don't see any other questions. If not, I will see you all on the team call. Thanks very much. <laughs>